Storytellers AZ, a discussion group for people who make a living telling stories. Hello and welcome to another episode of Storytellers AZ, the meetup group and podcast for anyone who wants to tell better stories. As always, my name is Tyler Hurst. I am now officially a writer, a voiceover artist, and mildly famous because the checker at Safeway recognized me from the news. So I got that going for me. You know, Excellent. No big deal. How much did you pay him? I didn't pay him at anything at all. Uh, but next you did go back in and grovel at us. I did. I did. I did it when I was like, dude, thank you for saying something. Thank you. I feel so awesome. <laughs> Uh, it was cool though. But anyway, uh, okay. Next to me is who's making fun of me, Brian. What's up? Hey, not much. What's going on with you? Who are you and what do you do? I've written, uh, films and television shows in the past okay. and now I'm working on a couple of plays and doing some social media work and, uh, having a good time making fun of, uh, women's movies. Go on. Do you value women just like in general? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth Newland, how are you doing today? I'm kind of shitty. All right. Why is that? Because I'm hungry. I didn't. I needed to eat. I tried to do too much. Tried, also, I need some wine. We tried to offer you food. I and know. scotch. And scotch. I know. And beer. I should have taken you up on it. All right. So besides that, is life going okay? It's fine. Your kids didn't drown today in the in the water? As far as I know. And the okay. lightning didn't strike you lightning through the house? Me. I think they're okay. Hey, that's a legitimate concern. I've gone swimming before. Yeah, but lightning. But lightning usually doesn't come into your house. I don't know. I've never had a bad... I could burn something, I guess, in Arizona. I never know. Sarah. What's up? Not much. What do you do? <laughs> uh, I am a writer, theoretically, one day, eventually. You've never written a word before? <laughs> oh, I write. I have lots of words filling my computer. I just have to actually package it into oh, something and nice. send it out into the world. I just got my book back from the editor, and I'm scared Ooh. to death to finish it and publish it. Why? Because it's... <laughs> Like, because, because it's, it's got a, his name on it. It's, a bunch, of, it's in, a bunch of embarrassing stories of through uh, through my life that I'm not quite sure I want to share, but I'm totally going to. I'm just yeah, having that you do little bit podcasts of, every. I know week these are worse. These are legal legal problems that I've had that I'm I'm checking to see if the statute of limitations is up on all of them just to make sure. Before the, I, and does Katie know about most of these? She knows all of them. Okay, so then what's oh, the worry? Yeah. Really? No, I'm not worried yeah. about it. All. I can't imagine that it would be worse than that one that you wrote about. The rapist one? Yeah, the rapist one. Why would you avoid saying it? He blogged about it. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's. I didn't know. I guess I didn't know how to, to cage it, but I guess the rapist one. Yes, the the night I was accused of being a rapist. (laughs) I swear to God, I didn't do it. Because I like women. And, but, unfortunately, and that's a really bad segue right now, but (laughs) But we're going to go a bit. (laughs) So, uh, we had a conversation earlier, a very heated one, about gender roles. In movies, storytelling, and how movies are either written. Not even just movies. I'm okay. sorry. There are a lot of gender roles in, in, in blogging too. In, sto- in, in, in anything storytelling. Like I talked about how I see a lot of female lifestyle bloggers who tend to be the more popular of, of, you know, there's not, the male lifestyle bloggers aren't, there's not as many popular ones. There's a lot of, a lot of women tend to be more popular because I think they tend to talk in a more conversational style. They do a lot of, uh, cool things with the, with the words and the typefaces and the fonts and, and the colors and all that. And their style is a little bit different than all that. Now, Brian. I agree with you on that. They're pretty, okay. the, their blogs are prettier. No, they get nicer stop pictures. Right here? Yeah. What male lifestyle blogger have you read? Tim Ferriss. I have not read him. Oh yeah, he's probably the biggest one. Tim and so Ferriss. he does. He doesn't have a conversational um, style. Oh, no, he does. You were just saying that your point was that of lifestyle bloggers. I said female lifestyle bloggers. Yeah, no, you said of lifestyle bloggers, the women tend to be more popular because they have a more conversational tone. No, there's more of them that are popular. There are okay in 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 female in the in in, in lifestyle blogging. There's a couple of really top guys, like five. Mm-hmm. All right. And then there's a second You're tier. You're going to need to send these to me. I will. I don't and then there's, and then there's, and then there's, and there's a second tier. The, the difference between the second tier of guys and the top tier of guys is huge. Huge. Which is the same in all blogs. I would say that there's more, and I don't think the difference between the top females and the second tier is as big. I think that That's, that is think, the case in all blogs. Like really? the Yes, like the mommy blogs. There's ones that everyone on the planet reads. Like the and bloggers then, and all that stuff. And Deuce and Amala. Like those, everyone reads those. And then there's 
like this entire huge step down where, you know, five people read those people. But do you think That's, those blogs have a really specific style? Between. Is what we're talking about. No. Do they, you think they're I all think, in a different I totally actually style? think that the the huge difference between the readership is when they started blogging and also like yeah. a, a general uh, most of them have had some kind of large Incident or something that's happened that Cancer, has, yeah, that has dragged everybody, divorce, right, right, right. Something like yeah, that, yeah. just got fired because yeah. of blogging, um, that has brought a whole bunch of readers in and then they were good enough that they could maintain that. Okay. They also started in like 2004. Okay. So here's a question. Cause I can't think of a blog I've read where a guy's had something like that, like a cancer or like, a disease or pregnancy or having children. Ooh, that's a that good would, That would cause me to read his blog. Oh, it would okay. bring me to someone's blog. Whereas in the women's blog, there are a lot of these that, the way you just put it, that's how they became big. That's how you became strong. So that becomes part of their style, the style of those blogs. And that's how they build readership. I think that is true more often because Women and sorry, not women. People who have more of a sh- w- more women tend to think about how they can help others. Women are are most more women are more horizontally focused than vertically focused. They're worried about what's around them. They're worried about taking care of family, friends, relationship focused. relationship focused instead of you know career or or I'm better than you. Oh or I no! Want to show now off. you're just like going I would say down more. The road no, 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 no. More of them that write. More of them that write are. So, well, no, it's relationship focused because I actually follow quite a few women who blog specifically about careers and yeah. careers that they're in. Okay. But it is very much relationship See, now, focused. I like those blogs a careers. lot more. But I think what we're also coming into is the fact that women are just in general by the way we're raised culturally yeah. and socially focused on relationships. Partially because we have a slight aptitude to do it better, but partially because we're also pushed into this a lot more. But then men tend to be much more, um, for lack of a better choice of words, a little bit more analytical, a little bit more like horse with the blinder focused one key point. Because they're pushed out into the world more to focus on those things. Hence, I just don't agree with these hence generalizations. The, hence the popularity. <laughs> a lot of generalizations. Um, hence the popularity. Yeah, exactly. Why it's a generalization. Hence the popularity of, say, tech blogs. Like, if you were to go on the, some of the most popular tech blogs, I would guarantee probably 95% of the followers are men. Most of it is written by men. It's and then there will be a 95%. five, and then there will be a oh, 5% yeah. female blogs? following of women who have more of that inclination and prefer more of that linear focus. I can think of thing. two popular female tech bloggers, Alexa yeah. Tsakis yeah. from TechCrunch and mm. then, uh, what's her name mm. from Pando Daily? Um, and, and if you look at their writing style, they don't write relationship focused. When no, they write, tech they write well. They, they write well. They write period. well, yeah. Um, but they tend to, um, and that works in their, in their, in their industry. But yeah, exactly. I, I agree that most of them, that, that the audience is, is, is mostly men because men tend to like te- be more interested in tech more because uh, let's face it, more men are in it, period. I mean, that's why. And, th- and that'll change, and that's changing a lot now. I think uh, we really need to let Elizabeth speak because her eyes are rolling out of her head yeah, very no, quickly. No, she I, can interrupt I, anytime I, she no, wants. No, and I do. I will interrupt. I don't have a problem with that. And, I'm not – I just – and that's just fine. I think what you're saying I don't have a problem with. That, Like, yes, I agree that more men read tech blogs and more men yeah. read sports blogs and more women read mommy blogs, but I don't think – that it's, I think I have this problem with what you're talking about as far as like style and this relation and you know, that like, because no, I disagree. My, my broker, Jay Thompson has his real estate blog. Um, and his is mostly successful on popular and it's like probably the most popular. And I would say he writes in a more blogs. feminine style than most. Men and would. I think that's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I, think that, I think that traditionally, that's what I'm, and, and by feminine, I don't mean female. Or girl, I mean feminine characteristics. He's and a playing difference. to his market, which, which is, is relationship building, yes. because this is what your yes. realtor is. Your yes. realtor becomes your best friend. You have yes. they have to know every facet yeah. about all the right. little tiny things in your life to be able yeah. to choose. Help you choose a neighborhood. Help you choose the type of house. Help you with the financial aspects. I, I mean, will, I'll tell him that you think he's feminine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I bet you he'll say yeah. <laughs> No, I be- he wouldn't. I bet you, I bet you more of his, I bet you mm. the, the, the decision makers that he deals with are more, 
are, mm. are mo- way more often women because women make mm. most of the financial decisions. And that's actually true. We can't actually argue about that. There's lots of studies that especially around the house, especially with house. anything to do with family, women are much more likely to make that decision or, or have a, a huge influence on it. I don't disagree. Um, I think that what is causing my hackles to rise in this conversation, um, has more to do with the choice of words in describing these two different styles. Like when you talk about a man as has a more analytical, like that's a favorable term. When then you say that women are more um, horizontal and, and involved in the family. Like relationship oriented? Like, relationship oriented. I think relationship it seems, it seems to negative? me no, that's that, not negative. it's... That it, it is um, like talking down to I women. I swear to God, it's that not. It's it feels not. like Elizabeth. that, and I'm not saying. I, okay, I'm here, we go, sure here we go. Here we go. No, in my you... in my marriage, <laughs> I can say that. Um, <laughs> I have that you say that instead of be calling yourself a single person yes, like you did. I kept doing it. I, like, I meant by myself <laughs> when I went to wait outside the kids, <laughs> the kids' gymnastics place by myself. <laughs> um <laughs> In my relationship with Katie, I have more f- more traditional feminine characteristics, and she has more masculine characteristics. Mm. She tends to be more uh, analytical mm-hmm. in in what she. And this is just characteristics of of it. I I am much more empathetic than she is. Like mm-hmm. if we were going to raise kids, we know who would be raising them, mm-hmm. and she knows that too, and that's fine. She also tends to when she she had talked about someone their, someone's marriage is breaking up, and she was like, "Well, what would you know?" She asked me, "What would I do if?" You know, we were ten, we broke up and I was like, well, besides, you know, drink myself to death and do a lot of drugs and freak out and cry to everybody. And, you know, f- you know, that, that type of, she goes, well, I'd bury myself in my work. I don't understand why more people don't do that. And that's much more of a, not male, but a masculine. Well, maybe that's the response. problem. So maybe we should not subscribe those terms to like, maybe we should just describe it in a less gender related way. I just think that it's, I think, I don't know. It feels like and my problem initially started with Brian and his choice of movies that what is a female movie and what's a man movie. Notebook and and Fight Club. Yes. (laughs) And I think that is the stupidest thing I ever heard because Fight Club is an excellent movie. And I think that it's, and I don't, you didn't even say the notebook first. It was like a worse one. It was something <laughs> it was really, the really, yeah, yeah, the, the vow. vow, yes. The vow versus Fight Club. Those were his two for what yeah, is those a are man really, those movie are not good and a good woman so movie. I went back to the notebook That's because most I women I know love the notebook. And then I brought up about I'm 10 shrieking. other movies. <laughs> but I, I do think, Elizabeth, that this is something that we're not saying is better or worse. In fact, I wish men had more of those qualities that women have. I wish men had more of those qualities and we'd be better people. Wish more men had more of them. Yes. Some, some of us do, man. Yeah. I'm sensitive. <laughs> not, not just Tyler crying in the corner. Um, but <laughs> did you say that women cry in the corner? Oh my God. You do hate women. <laughs> oh, I'm over you people. <laughs> I'm over you. No, I'm I think, saying. I think Elizabeth would be the one smacking the person crying in the corner. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do you, when we talk about masculine and feminine characteristics when it comes to storytelling and all that, are we talking, about a, a communication style, or are we talking about more of how it's marketed in Hollywood? For say, *Bridesmaids* and *Hangover* are essentially the same movie. I mean, can we agree that they're mm-hmm. pretty darn close? Same topic, okay. same well, and that's point. my problem with. And it. some, some, some men may like *Bridesmaids* more. Some women may like *Hangover* more. Whatever, that's fine. I've never known a man who liked *Bridesmaids* more. <laughs> oh, I have. Um, Straight man. Yeah, because they they thought that the writing was funnier, and they liked how the, the it is. It's sharp. I mean, they I liked how the that. the women tended to get along instead of making fun of each other as much. Mm-hmm. Um, because in bridesmaids, they never would have left anybody on a on a roof. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they just wouldn't. That's just women tend not to do that. <laughs> but women do tend to take a men crap tend sink. men tend to try to kill each other, and women try to have a good time. It's anyway. Um, but when you talk about how the, how those movies were marketed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Obviously, one one market to men, one market to women. But were, but were they written that way? I think Brian thinks they're both written for men. Consciously, yes. Consciously for men, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. Elizabeth disagrees. I'd say, I'd well, say no, most I of just... Hollywood is written consciously for men. Oh no, there's a whole. I mean, yeah, Twilight yeah. isn't written for men. That whole series, Harry Potter, mm-hmm. is obviously for kids, but it's a feminine side of kids. Little young, little, young boys didn't love Harry Potter. I don't know. High, high action drama oh, yes. dealing with extra, you know, like things like this. I'm sorry, most of these topics. Oh, I think Harry. Po- I think the Harry Potter series is popular because it was written for everybody. I mean, it had elements of mm-hmm. elements of both. 
Um, same with Hunger Games. But you compare Harry yes, Potter. No, but not the book. I'm not talking no. the book. I'm talking the movie. The movie, yes. the movie was. With, with, you know, the dark scenes, the high drama, the fast, the this, the that. Oh, you, you can know, see different that's trailers. Very yes. masculine. Now, but then all the pictures yeah. of, of, what's her name? The, the kitten, kiss, kittenness, kit, what's her Cat, name? Katniss. Katniss. Yes. Katniss. Yeah. Katniss. And all the relationships she had and, and how yeah. it was hard to kill. Now, that was much more of a feminine based. But in the movie, trailer. that part was very downplayed. Oh, yeah. Versus its role. Oh, yeah. That's what oh, I mean. Yeah. Is it was really marketed more towards. Yeah. So what do you? Oh, think actually, I believe you're yeah. wrong on that. I believe Hunger Games is totally marketed towards women. Oh yes, I totally Absolutely. agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess because when we were talking about the blogging stuff, um, you guys were saying that, that that my style blogging is much more suited for women or whatever, and I guess mm, that's what like I more suited. Well, that I'm writing towards women. No, that to me, it looked like that was that looked like that was the style that you were. That was the audience. The audience that I was trying for. But see, I don't ever ever think of it in that manner. Who are you writing to? Uh, No, I actually writing to yourself. Yeah, that's what I. I think she's writing for herself, and that's perfect, and that's what you should be doing. Is writing your voice, and if it and if it attracts women more than men, that's okay because that's your voice. Well, and I'm not arguing at this point. I'm just asking. Um, so, do you think that when you are writing anything, that you should have a conscious, uh, like, a gender in mind? I think you should have a a. a I think it helps. I think you should write for one person. They've always talked about it. you know, always write mm-hmm. for one person, right. whether that's yourself, your mm-hmm. your wife, your husband, your you know your boss. Your ideal um, audience, uh, yeah. probably not your ideal audience, or would be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. But yeah, writing for one person helps a lot. Uh, anyone. Because it's going to change your vocabulary choices. No. It's going to change your sentence structures. It's going to change what type of imagery you put in. If you put in imagery at mm-hmm. all, it's going to, because like say if I were to write something, say to my husband's techie group and most of his friends, I'm not going to talk the same way as I would my girlfriends when we're sitting out on a patio drinking some margaritas. I'm going to use entirely different word choices, entirely different stories. See, and I don't think I've ever everything. thought of it like that. Mm. I definitely don't think of it in, in terms of gender. Mm. And maybe that's my own, I don't know, failing, but I think of it's not, a, I it's not a failing it, necessarily. As far as like, mm. as far as sense of humor goes, I know that like my husband and I and my, my father, most of my sense of humor comes from my, my father and my mm. sister and brother. And we all have this like, I mean, it's the pervasive like toller trait that like, you know, that sense of humor. And it's not a feminine or masculine thing. It's a, mm. and it's mm. fairly like sarcastic. Mm. And so I guess I don't ever think of, that idea of that you should be writing. I don't know. I think this, the whole gender thing, it like, well, actually, angers my feminist. Well, side. Not that my husband's feminist. tech group, there are three women in his tech group and I'm focusing towards a type of mentality and type of topics that they talk about and a way they talk. And it's irrelevant that it, there's mostly men or women because I know the women in that group are going to be thinking and understanding very similar in the same pattern that they're all in that group. Yeah. Or if, or if they don't, people who think like your idea of what a traditional woman thinks like will be like that too. I mean, cause I can see it mm-hmm. too. Cause I've done it. Cause mm-hmm. I'm, I tend to be, like I said, more, more, more of my feminine character. Well, stuff so that what I do you write toward when you write? Cause I read your blog and I like it because I think I write to Katie. Mm-hmm. So you're writing for women. I'm yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. But you, he's well, already, the way he described Katie, it's like, she's like, a crossover. Yeah. but she, but she is. And that, and, and, yeah. and that helps she's because, no, yes. because, yes. because a yes. lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of guys, and this is definitely a juvenile thing. They like to hear about fights. They like to hear, they like to mm-hmm. hear strong words. Mm-hmm. They like to hear, they like to hear things that, that create, um, not conflict, but, but, you know, winning winners or losers. They tend to be much more competitive, tend to be not always to be much more competitive. Now my the stories to those people are nowhere near as fun as stories about how I gave a ball to a kid at a baseball game. Mm-hmm. And that was much more of a, um, not, not female based, but it was much more of a relationship based mm-hmm. article and women tend more, more women than men told me how they appreciate it. Now, a lot of fathers did as well. I mean, Matt definitely did. Everyone did that too. But that, that was relationship based. And that tends to be more, tends to be more women. Not always, but tends mm. to be more. Definitely. And so I find my stories are much better when I write towards women because they're, 
traditionally feminine characteristics tend to be tend to be more sensible and more about people. Well, you're also playing to your strength to some degree because you said already that you tend to have more of an empathetic nature. Yeah. So therefore, it and is I hate kind of, I hate the frat boy mentality anyway. So, yeah, so I, I hate you're playing that. to a strength. But it's just the same way you see female sportscasters now, which are popping up on ESPN and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. They just sound just like the guy standing next to them. Oh, they're, yeah. they're not trying to actually yeah. bring in a new audience. They're just trying to do the same thing in a bikini. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. and that, and I the sideline reporters are guilty of this way too often, and I hate that. It's like mm-hmm. you know what? I get it. Rick Buecher and I don't know a female sideline reporter's name. Uh, what's the one that had the picture <laughs> picture in the hotel? Sorry, yeah. whoever that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I you know I don't want. A lot of times they will sound like guys, and this doesn't mean that they just sound because all reporters, sports especially, have traditionally been been men. Um, and I don't want that. I mean, I want a different, I kind of want a different take. Like I talked to uh, the earlier last week, two weeks ago, I posted something about baseball. Mm-hmm. All right. And Elizabeth said, I don't give a shit about baseball. I don't care about any of that <laughs> no, stuff. No, because you posted but like 80 said, things about baseball. Yeah. I was it's talking really about the boring. score and the rules and winning and losing, <laughs> you know, stuff that baseball fans would talk about. about. And she says, I don't care about any of that. What I would care about is who the baseball players are dating, how the wives are doing relationship based stuff. Um, sure. which is, which is, but you're saying there's no difference. I'm not saying know. there's no difference. I, 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 I don't like I it. It feels like when you're talking sometimes <laughs> that you're saying that women are less intelligent and that they're like, but it's Elizabeth, less important no. Elizabeth. or like they're more involved in things that are stupid. <laughs> Elizabeth, there's like like nine- Elizabeth, you're the only one out of this entire conversation <laughs> that has put those tags on. No, yeah. they have never once okay, said that you um, have placed there, those tags. There are like nine kinds of you intelligence. Have placed those tags. And we, and I don't think that there, there are seriously, there, I think there are nine kinds of intelligence and mm. we do a poor job of using all of them mm. because usually we think of intelligent person as knows what to do and knows how to say it. Period. Mm-hmm. There's also people who know how to read other people. There's people who know how to mm-hmm. act toward other people. No, you know, all that type of stuff that are mm-hmm. so much more important. So what we do is we place thing on things like IQ, which has to do with competition and higher numbers, which is traditionally mm-hmm. male. When we talk about all the other kinds of intelligence, we think that's somehow lesser because that's what we've been measuring for so long. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You're giving me a headache and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and oh, so Elizabeth has a headache, so that'll be it for uh, Storytellers AZ right, today. Thanks, <laughs> yes, thank you for stopping by. In our, our episode of Storytellers AZ, we meet uh, the second and fourth Wednesday of every month here at Gangplank from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, next door in the cool new video slash audio studio with no air conditioning. It's really hot in here. Um, if you'd like to know more about us, check out storytellersaz.com. If you'd like to email Elizabeth and tell her how awesome she is, that Tyler at gangplankhq.com, and I will forward all those on, on to her and will praise her immensely. And Elizabeth, please go ahead and tell them your blog address so people can check out your blog. Oh, yes. Realestatetangent.com. Dot com. All right. Thanks, and have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to Storytellers AZ. We'll see you next time. Anybody else sweating? Oh my god, you screwed up the thing. (laughs) (laughs) Jerk. Sorry, Debbie. Just gonna hate that.